Good day. Today, I would like to spend 15 minutes talking about audit logging with the Cumulo cluster. After I explain a little bit about audit logging and what is used for, I'll show you a little demonstration. Cumulo will track all changes to the configuration of a cluster, as well as any changes to the file system. Anything from creating a file, reading, writing, changing an ACL, etc. All file system operations are audited. In order to not affect performance, Cumulo will never process or display audit logs. The Cumulo cluster will pass all of the audit events to a syslog server using the R syslog protocol. Again, in order to not affect performance, all audit logs are deduped. As an example, if you read a thousand records from a file, you will only get a single read event from auditing. Everything starts with the syslog server running the R syslog protocol. In order to enable auditing, find the audit menu item under the cluster tab on the Cumulo UI and plug in the IP address or machine name of the syslog server. When you configure the syslog server, although you can provide filtering for audit events, you should minimize what you do so that you can quickly capture all of the audit events. Finally, it should be noted that the syslog server does no processing or displaying of audit events other than some rudimentary filtering. You will need some additional software to take those captured audit events and process them into a more consumable format. If you Google audit processing software or audit log software, you will come up with many different companies providing that service. Many of those companies provide a SaaS service for audit processing through the cloud. Probably two of the most well-known software packages are Splunk and Elasticsearch. Both of those products can be run as a service in the cloud or on-premise. I have put together a demonstration of audit log processing using Elasticsearch. What you are about to see are two clusters that are working with video surveillance data running in the Cumulo corporate headquarters. Since it can be rather daunting to figure out all of the configuration needed to run Elasticsearch, I've put together a package of scripts that will allow you to build your own Elasticsearch cluster running on Docker. You can find the source for the scripts and a video demonstrating the entire installation processing at the following websites. Don't be concerned if you don't have Docker running in your environment. Installing and running Docker is only about a five to 10 minute process and is extremely easy. Let us look at a demonstration of the process logs within Elasticsearch. Here I have two clusters that are connected to uh, Elasticsearch through the syslog server. And I can demonstrate that here by actually showing you the audit connection. And you can see it's connected to this IP address 10.220.246.26. Or in this case, you can also use the machine name uh, fully qualified. Both of these are exactly the same. I just want to show you that you could use the IP address or you can use the name. It doesn't really matter as long as the, the connection can be uh, made through either one. And you can see that they're both connected. Now I'll actually start up the UI for Elasticsearch. And this is done through the program called Kibana, which is the uh, uh, program that does the UI presentation of everything stored in Elasticsearch. And you come up with this screen. Um, what you typically would do then is come over to the menu and say, for instance, you want to look at the raw data. And now you can actually see all of the entries in there from any given point of time. You can specify the time period. Here it's only looking at like 15 seconds. You can see 1,582 hits, uh, 15 minutes, I guess it's, it's set there. And you can see the uh, individual pieces of data. Not much uh, that you can actually see from this. You could do queries against this raw data if you want. But what I've done is I've actually created some visualizations uh, where you can see the individual uh, visualization pieces. For instance, uh, what are the protocol operations? And you create these visualizations. And then what you do is you lay them on a dashboard and that dashboard then displays everything that you want. So for instance, um, I've got 2000 audit logs connected through two clusters. But let's go and change the time period. 15 minutes is not really much information. Let's go and click this button here and say, I want to look at the last 24 hours. 
And then you'll notice that nothing really gets updated on the screen. So what you want to do is refresh every, let's say, five seconds. And you just hit start. And now every five seconds, everything that's processed will be displayed automatically. So let me just walk through some of the things that I've got here. Um, all I've done is I've put up a markdown, which you can put any documentation in there that you want, uh, how many clusters are connected or that you're looking at right now, what are the count of the audit records within the given period of time. In this case, we've selected 24 hours. What are the nodes that are reporting the audit events? So we don't report just audit events per cluster. We also report them for every node that's doing the operation. So in this case, you see group one, two, three, and group six, and also baby group uh, node five. And if you were to look at it and put your cursor over it, you'd see group one has got 580,000 records, group two is 327,000 records, group three is 280,000 records. Those are all the nodes that are actually doing operations. So from that, you can surmise that your load balancing maybe is a little bit slanted towards group one and group two and group three are pretty equal. Uh, there's probably about a 10% difference and this one's probably uh, got two clients connected to it or three clients because it's got almost 100% difference from the next node. Then you can see the protocol operations that have been done. Almost all of them are SMB. Again, if you go into any area and highlight it, you'll see that out of the 1189217, I've got 1189 uh, was it 190, almost 100% are SMB. And that's because the workload that I'm running is all video surveillance, and video surveillance tends to be a Windows protocol. Over here, I have percentage of file system operations, and you can see all the different operations there. And if you highlight them, you see that the colors are highlighted. And again, rest your cursor in there, and you can see percentages. So, you know, uh, file system, reading of the metadata versus reading of the data, writing of the metadata, deleting, etc. Let's come down here. Uh, count by extension. I actually break out the extension of the files that are touched, so you can see that down at the bottom, .blk files, .idx files, .xml files, .ini files. Um, these are all file types that are typically used in video surveillance. In your environment, if you were doing, for instance, um, maybe you were um, looking at home directories, you may see JPEGs, you may see .doc files, .xls uh, for uh, different types of file types that, uh, that you're looking at. Um, on the right, you see who the users were who were accessing it and what time period. So again, since I'm doing video surveillance, you can see that I've got three different users here uh, with the, um, they're all going through Active Directory. So you can see the, the domain name is VSS backslash and then the user ID, user ID, user ID. And as you highlight them, you can see where they're touching and what their percentages are. So if I actually go at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, uh, let's say seven o'clock, you can see what each one of those users is doing in terms of uh, operations. Uh, down here, I have status codes per time period. And then finally, I have the path names that are deleted over that time period. So you can see the actual path name and you can see which user did it and how many times they deleted. Now, Interestingly enough, if someone were to delete a .doc file, you'd probably only see one delete in a time period. Uh, in the case of uh, video surveillance, in this file here, config.xml, it's deleted, recreated, deleted, recreated uh, 24 times within that uh, time period. And this time period, as we've specified, is 24 hours. So once an hour, it's deleted and recreated. So let me show you what I think is one of the neatest features of uh, Elasticsearch uh, is creating a panel of controls where you can actually select what it is that you want to look at. You can look at, say, the clusters. You can look at the protocols. You can look at the operations. 
And what the uh, controls panel does is it selects and populates this menu item based upon the items that are already populated in the database. So if you had 10 clusters, you wouldn't have to create a control with the 10 cluster names. You just create a field and it will go and select the data and it would have automatically those 10 cluster names. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, show you some of the features of selecting the types of operations you wanna look at. Now, because I'm updating this screen every five seconds, if you remember here, I set a refresh every five seconds. One of the things that you'll see is because I'm updating the UI, it would wipe out my entries pretty quickly because I couldn't select them fast enough in five seconds. So I will hit stop. Then I will come over here and say, I want to select a create file and I want to create a, a delete and then I'll apply the changes. Now I can go back and say, turn back on that, uh, that refresh. So now what you'll see is that I'm only looking at deletes and creates and you'll see I'm down to one cluster, 396,000 entries and it's on these three nodes and you can see the counts have changed as well. So I've done creates and deletes of those uh, that many on each of these nodes over that period of time. You can see that my deletes and creates, the percentages, I've actually created more files than I've deleted. Again, that's video surveillance. You're creating lots of assets, but you're also deleting a lot of assets because of the fact that you have retention times that you meet and you delete those things. Then you can see down here how many uh, file extensions have uh, met those operations of create and delete. And then what are the users? And then of course, what are the status codes? And then uh, delete doesn't change because this is already filtered where it's only picking deletes. Uh, so it won't matter for creates because this uh, only picks uh, deletes. You can of course create uh, these path name, um, these audit logs uh, for or this panel, I should say, for any um, type of operation you want to do. You could list creates or modifies or whatever and put them up on your uh, dashboard. Anything that you wish to do, you can create a visualization for. I'd like to do one final demonstration before we end. Um, let's just clear out the form and apply the changes so that we can go back and view all of the audit logs for the last 24 hours, which is what we've selected at the top. Now what I'm gonna do is actually generate some load and show you uh, that load captured through the audit log. So I'm gonna make it very simple and just come up to Baby Groot, go into the API. I don't know if you ever use this tool. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, generate some API calls. I'm gonna log in and hit try it and you'll see the what returns. And then I'm gonna come down to the file system itself and say that I want to uh, run through the directories recursively and I wanna, for instance, start at the top slash, return a thousand items. I wanna go five levels deep in the file system and hit try it. It'll take a couple seconds, but you can see there it is. It's returned a thousand items by going through the API. Let's see what's happened in our audit logging. Now, of course, if you look at it this way, you'll see that there's really no change, but let's go and select the protocol as API and then apply it. And you see there's 59 records across two clusters. So something must have happened in Groot because I was on Baby Groot. And you can see Baby Groot's 30, uh, node five is 32 entries, uh, node uh, two is 18 entries, and then Groot must have done something in there. And you can see exactly what happened. Of course, it's 100% API, but we've done list directory 45%, read metadata 45%, and login uh, 8%. Um, and then who did it? And of course, we're not going to show extension because we really didn't touch any files, if you will. We only read some metadata. And then the other thing you'll see is that the filtering's already turned on to look at deleted files and of course we didn't delete any so we're not going to find any results in this thing. Um, that's a very simple little demonstration that you can run yourself. You can do different things in the API in order to generate load. Of course you can also mount with NFS or uh, go into Windows and map the drive and do some things there. Just copy some files and then you can see what comes out of the audit log so you can see exactly what happens. I'll clear this, apply the changes and we'll go back to what's viewed for 24 hours. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what audit logging can do for you. 
Uh, thank you for viewing.